Today, I have Marco Solia, the REXA Regional Sales Manager. Marco, welcome to my podcast. Bill, thanks for having me. Excited to talk to you today. Hey, um, and we're going to go over uh, an application challenge, right? And the application challenge is we're going to talk about an actuator that delivers applications where you need precision, repeatability, high speed of response, Potentially, it could, you could also need high thrust, and it's simple to set up. Uh, and why is that important to you, the folks that are watching this podcast? Well, if you can deliver those things, what's that going to do to your process? Is that going to give you higher throughput? Is that going inc to increase the reliability of your uh, process? Is that going to give you better quality control um, and other things? So let's go there. Uh, Marco Solio, let's talk about that Rexa electrolytic actuator. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, the Rexa electrolytic actuator is a self-contained electro-hydraulic actuator. It's a position-based system, so it reads a position continuously and will drive exactly the hydraulic system to match the incoming control signal. So we use this actuator in power and pipeline in oil and gas downstream refinery applications, petrochemical plants, and oil and gas pipeline applications on liquid and on gas, because our customers need very tight control. They need um, a highly repeatable system. They want to get the reliability of hydraulics with the control of electric actuators, and that's what we're able to provide. So, Bill, I'm going to share a few slides, if that's all right. Yeah, and that'd be cool. While we do some share uh, screen sharing, and, and go ahead, Marco. Yeah, I'd like to just show people a little bit about how REXA works inside. And from that, we can um, we can talk a little bit more about why this is important to, to our customers. So if you're able to see the pictures here, the REXA actuator is yeah. a positioner with a mechanical actuator combination. We manufacture linear actuators, rotary style actuators, and drive style actuators. Very simply, it takes incoming control signal from the customer. It reads position feedback continuously on the self-contained hydraulic actuator and will adjust the motor controls to match the feedback to the incoming control. We can show that it's a self-contained hydraulic system. There's no open, um, op it's never open to the atmosphere or to air. What that means is the oil doesn't break down and it's very low maintenance. Being a very compact system also improves the reliability. When you think about a hydraulic system traditionally at a power plant or at a refinery, there's one HPU system that may drive multiple actuators. This shows that it's going to be a single hydraulic system for each actuator. It's built on board. Because there's no air or no exposure or contamination of the oil that we use, the reliability is high and we don't have to change the oil on our systems. And that's really important for reducing maintenance. And then using the strengths of hydraulics, we're offering a highly precise um, incompressible system. So when we think about how it compares against the pneumatic system, there's no softness, there's no dead time, there's no hunting occurring. And that's all going to be really important in the demonstration we're going to do later. Yes. The REXA system uses a modular and scalable design where we're using the same power modules, which generate up to 2,000 pounds of pressure, which modulates across a closed hydraulic cylinder. And then the position feedback is the important part. So the controls are watching the feedback and then it's modulating the pressure to achieve the correct position or to achieve the targeted position. Again, closed loop self-contained hydraulics and its position-based system. And on, it's the same technology on both linear and rotary style actuators. That's all I had for slides for us today. That's Any other good. questions, Bill? Yeah, you know, just just one thing, you, you were mentioning the oil earlier, and I know, I know whenever I talk about Rexa, that's one of the questions people come up with is, or their concern is that it's an oil-based system. So, um, the fact that it's a sealed system is uh, and self-contained is important. 
Yeah, so we use Castrol 5W50 synthetic motor oil as our standard, and being sealed means that we're going to have no oil maintenance. When you think of an HPU system, you're going to think of having to do changing out the hydraulic fluid. You're thinking of servo valves and pumps that are always running. This is all equipment that can break. Being very compact, we don't have any of those issues. Yeah, I mean, how much oil goes into one of those systems? How, how much oil is it approximately? It depends on the size of the actuator. The L2000 that we're going to show in the demonstration has about 10 ounces of motor oil in it. So very low volume. We're not talking gallons or 55 gallon drums of hydraulic fluid. We're talking a very low compact system. And for the comparison to pneumatics, that's really important because what that does is a small change in pressure delivers a position change right away. And that talks right to our low dead time, how we're able to respond instantly to control signal change by comparison. Bingo, bingo. Let's, yeah. let's go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say, let's go to the next step then and, and show some of that precision in, uh, in low dead time and set up, right? You're gonna go set up next? Yeah, let's show you guys how easy it is to calibrate Arexa. And I'm gonna share my screen again here. And I think that's important because the, you know, the Rex is a, a, a different actuator. It's a, it's a little different. And, um, and I think the ease of use is a, a major feature. So go ahead. So this is a Rex L2000, 2000 pounds of thrust. And this one that we're using for demonstration has two inches of stroke. So today we're gonna demonstrate how to calibrate the Rex actuator on the bolt. We're gonna watch the bolt and over here underneath the actuator as we come to the seated position. And then we're also gonna watch the gauge to show that we're building up the pressure when we come metal to metal or when the valve is seated. So it's an automatic mode. And the first thing we're gonna do is bring the actuator into the setup mode by holding auto and manual for five seconds. Once it's in setup mode, we can move across the headers to be able to change different parameters. Today, we're gonna to focus on calibration. And the way we do a calibration is we're gonna teach it the position low, and we're gonna teach it the position high. And then we're gonna calibrate the control signal for those two positions. Can you hear it, Bill? I cannot hear it on this end. I heard it earlier, but not, on, not right now, so. Okay, I'll get the, the, actual, the Rex actuator sound on for the next move. Okay. So what we've done is we've, calibrated the position low and you'll notice that as it came oh, I can hear it now yep so as we're backing the actuator positions we're teaching it position low and we're teaching it position high the next parameters are going to be to teach it the control signal low and the control signal high and you'll see we're calibrating it across with the 4 to 20 million signal generator this typically would be the control signal coming from the control room and so the operator would call for four milliamps or the low position or 20 milliamps or the high position. So we've completed the, we're completing the signal calibration here with the signal high. We'll lock that in and we'll bring it back into the automatic mode. The automatic mode is following the control signal from the customer's DCS PLC control. The actuator moves away as soon as the control signal and goes precisely and we can see between zero and a half percent and then 100 percent back down to zero as it comes to the seat it's building up the hydraulic pressure at the position zero nice oh it can make very small step changes also the next video we wanted to show you is doing the same calibration but we're going to calibrate it on a raw egg. We're going to go back into the calibration window through setup and we're going to teach it the position low on top of the egg where the egg actually cracks and we'll end up listening for the egg crack. So we've achieved that position low and we're going to that. get close to the position, you can see we're making very small position changes in the calculation. Notice the pressure isn't changing because there's a load against the actuator. At the position-based system, it's going to position the pressure. 
So yeah. come here, twenty percent, and we just heard the egg crack. Just we'll heard the egg crack. So Marco, that's important because that's that's showing the precision of the actuator and the really tight hysteresis, correct? Yeah. So what we're demonstrating is that we can put it to zero position very reliably. We're also demonstrating that on the next video here, we'll show you here, we'll zoom in on this egg crack. Bingo. So when we put a position zero, see that crack reopen. We're going to see on the small indicator, which is here for demo purposes, that we're hitting the zero mark every time. We can move it up in increments of less than 1%. Also, we're modulating between zero and less than 1%, which is about zero to 10 thousandths of an inch of movement. You're coming in and out on me a little bit there when you're when you're talking. So yeah, sorry. It's demonstrating that we modulate between zero and less than one percent. And when we do that, what's happening is it's modulating within zero to ten thousandths of an inch without any overshoot. So I'm going to play the rest of the video here, where we're going to stop. It's stopping less than 1% and moving down to zero. So we're able to offer stiff hydraulic control within 1%. Okay. Any so, questions, Phil? Yeah, I mean, so you're saying stiffness. Um, how about speed? How about speed? How quick can this actuator react? Yeah, so our speed is, well, there's movement speed and reaction time. So the way, the speed that the actuator moves is something that we will do in the sizing process where we're understanding our customers required torque or thrust we're understanding the stroke length and how fast our customers needed to move and we can specify different motor configurations for faster operation the dead time or how fast it's responding the time before it moves is in the milliseconds so we're responding right away to the control signal change initiating movement and going to position very quickly Okay, so and and then from a standpoint of from a standpoint of um, thrust, you know, this is going. This is an electronic actuator that goes on a valve or a vane or a damper, you know, some kind of device that you're moving, right? And you want that to be very precise. Some of those devices are small. Some of those devices are large. What kind of thrust can we deliver? I, I, I think we're 2,000 pounds up to yes. 120, but I uh, give me that number again. Yeah, so the Rex, the linear actuator is, this one here we're demonstrating with is an L for linear 2,000 pound thrust actuator with two inches of stroke. We can do up to a, a linear 120,000 pound thrust actuator with, we've done over 60, over 100 inches of travel, and we do that in water, um, hydro plant applications or large gate valve applications. On the rotary actuators, we'll start at 2,500 inch pounds of torque and we'll go up to 400,000 inch pounds of torque. And we've done a million inch pounds of torque. Typical 400,000 inch pounds of torque include ID fan dampers and large rotary valves for pipeline industries. So wrapping things up, let's, let's go where the rubber meets the road with Rexa. Let's talk applications, go. Yeah, so in power, we're looking at applications around the boiler, we're looking at boiler level controls, we're looking at feed water valves, we're looking at temperator valves. We like playing in the HP bypass, the turbine bypass system, the hot reheats. In pipelines, we're looking at pipeline flow controls and pressure control valves. In the refineries, we're working around the FCC units and in other processes. But around the FCC, we're looking at slide valves, we're looking at FCC flue gas valves for retrofit applications. Um, in metals, we're working on blast furnace dampers and then gas control valves. So really a lot of different applications across a lot of different industries. Nice, uh, so, so those are the core for Rexa and, and, uh, and, and I'm, I'm aware of uh, quite a few of them, but I also know that you're stepping into some other industries. Um, Let's just pop out there real quick. I know you're doing paper mill stuff. Uh, you're doing some chemical stuff. Let's just highlight a couple of those uh, real briefly here, Marco, before we wrap this up. Yeah, so in chemical plants, we're looking at rotating equipment applications like governor controls. 
We're also looking at um, fuel valves around steam turbines and gas turbines. On gas turbines, we're also looking at inlet guide vanes. You mentioned pulp and paper. At pulp and paper mills, we're working on basis weight actuators, replacing um, obsolete actuators. And what we're doing is we're able to give the tightest level of process control in the paper making process. Nice. Um, interesting. Uh, I used to call on a paper mill at one time, and, and that paper making process, being able to give them tighter control is 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 probably give I would imagine is giving that paper mill some really good uh, payback on that application. Yeah, stay tuned for a future podcast. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. All right. Um, wrapping things up, I want to thank everybody for watching uh, the podcast today. I want to thank my guest, Marco Solia with Rexa, the regional sales manager. Marco, thank you so much for coming on today. Uh, great job and uh, great energy. And uh, this was a lot of fun. As you folks can tell, Marco and I know each other and uh, we have worked together for, for quite a few years. So uh, it was a lot of fun. Thanks, Thanks. again, Marco. For the customers who have those challenges, you're looking for high precision, high thrust, repeatability, speed of response, reach out to us at Eastern Controls. We'd be glad to help you and have a conversation about REXA. Thanks again.